My friends, I have a problem that I have been just kind of brute forcing through for the past three years. You know, it's that type of problem that you have where you know there's a better solution, but you're just not gonna look into it. And finally, I've just kind of been forced into it because our friends over at Sabrent sent me this four terabyte NVMe drive. Now you might be wondering what sort of problem would I be having that can be solved by a four terabyte NVMe drive? And that is downloading video games for benchmarking on every new system that I have, which doesn't sound like a big problem for the majority of people and actually isn't such a big deal if it's desktops because I can just slap the NVMe into each drive. No, my friends. My tr difficulty, my troubles came with the fact that I've been reviewing a lot more laptops lately. I currently have this one, this one, this one, Reese has another one, and we have two more coming in. With laptops, especially low-end laptops, you run into a couple few problems. Number one, download speeds only Wi-Fi, so it takes however fast I can get it, 300 megabits per second, which is insanely fast, but here's the thing, when you're downloading multiple games that are 70 and 80 gigabytes each, it takes a freaking long time to get PC set up and ready to go for testing them out on video games. Number two, a lot of the laptops I test have 120 to 250 gigabytes, and that's just not enough for all of the games that I wanna test, which is where not only does the four terabyte Rocket Q drive from Sabrent come in, but also their SSD enclosure. This, my friends, is the solution to all of my problems. This allows me to finally run a Steam drive. Everything is stored on here and I turn it on and it works. Let me show you. So first up, before we even get into installing this, I kind of want to show off Sabrent's toolless enclosure that they have here because this is actually the cream of the crop when it comes to making sure that everything is simply set up. So as you can see here on the back, there's this little ring that you pry open you twist it and then you take this out and then bam, the drive lies underneath. And not only is it toolless to get in to the drive itself, but also to hold it down because this right here is a magnet that is holding it down. So you actually don't need to screw the M.2 drive down at all. And then there is also a thermal pad on this side so that the entire thing acts like a heat sink for the drive so that regardless of what's going on is actually keeping it cool, keeping it working and making sure that my drive stays as good as I want it to be. So the plan right now is to take this Dell G3 15 that I just received and we're gonna do a video on later and show you how I intend to use Use the external drive. Now you can see right here, I don't have hardly anything installed besides Crystal Disk Mark, which shows that the internal drive is 1.8 gigabytes per second read and about a gigabyte per second write. Now on the Sabrent NVMe 3.0 drive, the Rocket Q right here, we typically get about three gigabytes per second read and then around three gigabytes per second write. It's a little slower than that. Those are really respectable speeds. However, when we put it into here, we are then now bottlenecked by whatever interface we choose to use, whether it's USB 3, 3.1, 3.1 Gen 2 by 2, it's all dependent on that. So we can get three gigabytes per second read and write, but we're not really gonna experience that. However, that's not really all that important for playing games. If you watch any review on the speeds of NVMe versus SSD right now, it doesn't really lead to that much of a better game experience. However, we likely will start seeing that come through once direct storage is implemented onto PC because of things like the PlayStation 5 having a completely different setup on its SSD architecture but for now we can get as good as we need for USB 3 so we're gonna try this as a kind of worst case scenario we're gonna use the type C connector to type a this isn't going to be 40 gigabits per second at all but this is gonna be a little bit slower than that so we're gonna go ahead and plug this in to the laptop and then we're gonna run a crystal disk mark setup on that so you can see just how fast this drive is just over regular USB a so we're gonna check that one 
and come back to it in a second. So you can see we're about 450 megabytes per second read and write, which is actually really comparable to a SATA 3 SSD. And this is just over a USB 3.0 interface. That is not bad. Now we can go ahead and see if there is a faster port on anywhere on this computer. Okay, you can see that by switching to this other port, it is not running at USB 3 speeds because we're only getting 40 megabytes per second, which is around 300 megabits per second, which is just awful. So we're gonna we're gonna stop that test right there. That these ports on the right hand side clearly on a different interface. So the best speeds that we're gonna get over here are in that 500 megabyte per second region. So now let me show you how to get this Steam drive set up. You can install Steam wherever you like, it really doesn't matter. You just install it, you open it up, and it's very intuitive on Steam. However, there are ways of doing it on other launchers such as Blizzard or Ubisoft or GOG. You just have to point them in the correct direction of the directory that you're looking for, which is what what we're gonna do here on Steam. Primarily, most of the games that I benchmark are on Steam, which is why we're using it right now. Now that we have Steam installed, it's actually very simple from here. So the majority of the games that I wanna use are already on there. So it's very simple. You, you hit Steam, you go to Settings, then Downloads from there, click on Steam Library Folders, and you can see it's trying to ask you for the regular one on the C folder. What you do is you select the one that's currently on the external drive. Mine happens to be in folder E, and I click on the Steam Library one that was created for it. And you can see that there was 466 used gigabytes of space for that one. And we're just gonna hit okay. It's gonna download the Steamworks common redistributables and soon we should be able to access the games. So now going over to the library, let's see the ones that are installed and let's go ahead and load up. Uh, we can try Horizon Zero Dawn, but that's gonna take forever to load the shaders. Let's go ahead and do Death Stranding and check that out. It's just as simple as hitting agree on all of that. When is this even running? I have no idea. This is an i5-10300H, and what graphics card does it have? A 1650Ti, okay, great. And now we're in the game. It is that simple. This saves me so much time because even Death Stranding is a game that is several tens of gigabytes. And regardless of the fact that I have a gigabit download speed and I might be able to wire this particular laptop up because it has an ethernet port, it's still going to take me a lot of minutes to make that happen. It usually takes at least a couple hours for me to get all of the downloads done between all of the different games that I'm working on. Death Stranding is one of many, but now, it just takes seconds. It is so easy for me to get my game library set up in a way that I've never experienced before. And thankfully, because this Sabrent drive is, as I've mentioned several times, four terabytes in capacity, that leaves me all of the room that I need. I actually use about over a terabyte of games when I have my full suite installed. But in case I wanna use other things such as just having regular project folders on there, it's as easy as me creating a partition, leaving the Steam drive by itself, and then I still have plenty of room to use it not only as a Steam boot drive, but then as a backup for other things. I actually use this as a Windows install, one of the partitions is a Windows install at this point. So the Sprint Rocket Q NVMe 4 terabyte drive is honestly a lifesaver when it comes to the production that I'm doing around here. But the best thing is this is not even the biggest capacity that Sprint offers. In case four terabytes for whatever reason is not enough for you, you can actually pick up an eight terabyte drive from them of the Rocket Q variety. That eight terabyte drive is gonna cost you a cool $1,400, which is over double what the four terabyte is. This is only $720. Even though it's a high cost, it saves me so much time to have an expansive Steam library drive that I can just go ahead and throw in to whatever I'm working on at a given time. But in case the NVMe 3.0 speeds is not enough for you, they also have a four terabyte 4.0 drive, which is actually not that much more expensive. It's about $30 more. It's the Sabrent four terabyte Rocket Q4, and it uses QLC flash because that's how you get up to these high capacities at this point is by using QLC, which actually isn't great for every purpose, 
dangerous because it runs out of its bit depth quite quickly, but it serves a big purpose in a lot of applications such as a secondary drive like I have here. So big thanks to Sabrent for sending over not only the four terabyte drive, but also this toolless SSD enclosure for saving my bacon when it comes to time management. And I have learned the lesson that I really should, if it's a simple fix, I should just do it because the amount of time and effort I would have saved over the years is, is monumental at this point. And I'm ashamed with myself that it took this long for me to make it happen. But the good news is we're at the place with USB interface speeds, with SSD speeds, that having a steam drive running off of an external enclosure it's super simple, barely an inconvenience. It happens oh so easily. So that's gonna be the end of this video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you would use a four terabyte SSD for. Would you use a Steam drive? Would you use it externally, internally? Wanna hear from you down below in the comments. While you're down there, hit the like button on this video. Get subscribed, stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.